In this video, I'm going to explain to you the secret of my baking soda bases. It's not a big secret. So I've always liked to try to, uh, you know, it, it better myself as far as my craft of tabletop wargaming hobby. You know, I like to make it so that I can paint better. I like to make it so that I can uh, build and construct and convert better. And uh, I've always tried to make my basing be something really kind of special if I can. I, I enjoy the basing aspect of it. I enjoy the telling a little story on the base of my models. So um, when I first started getting into wargaming and everything and people would say, oh, you sprinkle some sand and some PVA glue and you, you, there you go, your, your base is done. I thought that, that doesn't look right to me. The fact of the matter is, is that sand in comparison to a 28 millimeter uh, model is wildly out of scale for being sand. Um, grains of sand next to a person who's supposed to be six foot tall roughly, but is about 28 millimeters from eyes to the bottoms of the feet, sand is basically like gravel at that point. So if you want your models to be standing in a field of gravel, well, you can do that. I've done it in the past. You can kind of see some images here of some of my oldest models that I ever painted. And uh, yeah, they're pretty much standing on a big old field of gravel. Uh, I didn't want to do that forever. I wanted something that was a little bit more to scale. So I started thinking, well, what else is, what's, what's finer than sand? And I thought, well, salt, but it's not that much finer. And then uh, one day I was over at a friend's house and he did something that was kind of interesting. He was trying to magnetize some sort of space marine vehicle. I don't know if it was a rhino or a predator or a, one of those things, but it was Sponsons. And he needed a magnet to be in a certain spot inside there, but he didn't want to have to like drill anything or glue anything. He wanted to glue, but he didn't want to have to like drill it so he could glue it. He just wanted to glue it and have it sit in the right spot. And he has a background in... Um, scale modeling back before he got into gaming. And so he took a big blob of CA glue, your, your normal super glue stuff, and then he dropped the magnet in that spot that he wanted to be in. And then he took this white powder and he sprinkled it all over the top. And I said, what, what, what the heck was that? And he's like, oh, it's just baking soda. It acts kind of like as a catalyst. It almost instantly hardens up the CA glue and then it'll hold the magnet in place really well. And then it, I don't have to wait for it to dry and it'll, you know, it'll slide around inside the glue. It just, boom, instantly pretty much just you know, rock hards it pretty much right where it is. And I started thinking more and more about baking soda and realizing how completely fine grain it is in comparison to say like salt or, or um, you know, sand. And uh, I started kind of messing around and doing some things. And I'm gonna tell you about those things now. My first couple of tests were on some models that I was just kind of hoping to uh, get painted up real quick. They were some uh, mantic skeletons. And so I, uh, I basically just coated the base in, uh, uh, in, in CA glue and then just dumped it into a thing full of uh, baking soda. And uh, that's not super great. That's not a perfect uh, thing because what happens is that as the catalyst, I'm assuming, I'm no scientist, uh, I'm no baking soda scientist, but when the, the cataclysm, no, that's not right. Anyway, when the catalyzation uh, is happening, if you have too much powder, I think on top of too much glue, it kind of gets these weird ripply looks, which if you're looking for that, if that's the look you want in your base is great. But if you don't, then, you know, it's probably not such a good idea. So in that situation, I started kind of going in other directions and saying, well, how else can I do this so it won't cause that weird, super bumpy, almost wrinkly look to my bases? Turns out like a lot of things in life, it's just patience. Uh, what I've done now at this point is I've started taking glue and I've started putting the, uh, the glue down on the base and spreading it around with a toothpick. And then I sprinkle the baking soda onto it and it starts to harden up very quickly and uh, doesn't generally get too bumpy, but it's got a nice kind of texture to it. And sometimes I add texture. I'm gonna show you that stuff here in a second, actually, uh, down here on the, uh, below on the, on the tabletop. But I just wanna explain the overall process and kind of how I got to where I got. I'm sure other people, this is not something I've invented, I'm sure. It's just something I kind of sort of discovered myself and maybe just because I didn't do enough research. But a lot of people keep asking me as they see my models and they see my bases, they're like, how are you doing those bases? Why is the, why is the grit so fine? And I explain to them how I do it. And um, I just figured I should probably explain to you guys. All right, let's see if we can get this to work. So this is an old square base from Fantasy, I think. It came with something that I bought. I don't remember any, what anymore, but it looks like this. 
and it's something that I'm going to use to practice on because I don't see myself using it as a normal modeling tool. So first thing you need is some super glue, some cyanoacrylate, some CA glue, whatever you want to call it. Um, I use the stuff that I get at Hobby Town, and I normally can get the top off, but sometimes I can't. So sometimes I have to get at it with pliers. Or not. <laughs> Frickin'. Okay, so you take your CA glue and you take your base, all right? And all you have to really do is just, just slop a whole bunch on there. That's really all you're gonna do. You're just gonna get a bunch on there and then we're gonna take a toothpick and we're gonna spread it around. All right, so the trick is, is that you basically just wanna move it around and get it where you want to go with the, the you know, the, the I think some people call them cocktail sticks. Here we call them toothpicks. But you just move it around. If you've already got the model glued to the base, you want to use this to kind of scooch it in between the model's legs. But if you were doing some sort of like a objective marker or something like that, then you know it, you don't need to. So you do that, and then you could just start sprinkling. But a lot of times you want to actually start putting some texture in. If you put some texture into the glue before you start sprinkling on the um, baking soda, what happens is you can actually kind of make the baking soda bumpy underneath. So I like to use kitty litter very frequently. So I'll just take some kitty litter and it's important to kind of not try to get it all over the place. And sometimes you put a little, sometimes you put a lot and you kind of just get it to sprinkle like this and it's sitting there like that. And now the big trick to not making a giant mess is to use one of these little Tupperware doohickeys and you take this and you take your your stuff here, and then you just, what I'm doing is this. I'm just moving my fingers back and forth and I'm just sort of kind of like, just kind of, it's like if you're taking a pinch of it and you're just gonna sprinkle your pinch directly all over onto the CA glue. And it will kind of get in there and be clumpy. And the more you sprinkle, the, the more it'll spread out. But that's pretty much it. You're just gonna do that and try to cover as much of the CA glue as you possibly can and get as much of it in there. And then you're pretty much ready to go. Now, this does not mean you are now ready to paint. You have to let this dry a little bit and it will dry quickly because like I said, it's a catalyst. Um, sometimes I will tap it and that will help. Sometimes I'll use the edge of my X-Acto blade or something along those lines, but that's basically it. Now that looks like a hot mess, doesn't it? Give it time. As soon as it starts to really set up, I'm gonna go back at it with a brush, an old crunchy brush that you don't use anymore. You never throw away a brush. When a brush gets terrible, hold on to it because you can find other uses for it. But you, one of the uses is to get rid of this stuff, kind of blow it, and then you go away from there. And then you're pretty much ready to go. So it's been about three or four minutes and uh, it's pretty much ready to go. So here you've got this, it's pretty much ready. I'm just gonna start brushing off any excess, okay? using an old, like I said, a crunchy old brush that you're not gonna use for paint anymore because it's gonna get, I would actually take this brush and just set it aside and this is your new um, brushing off baking soda brush because it's gonna get baking soda in there and I just usually brush back and forth and try to get as much of it off as I can and this helps to break it apart and then I do this and just blow on it a couple of times, a couple of quick bursts and now you have basically a nice little piece of uh, texture that's gonna look very different. It's gonna look maybe in this situation a little muddy, but it's got some kind of bumpiness or chunkiness underneath it. At this point, I could then now throw down some more glue, okay? So I throw down a little bit more glue here, right? And now I'm gonna sprinkle some more kitty litter and I'm gonna be very gentle, just a little bit here, a little bit there. That was too much, but you see what I'm doing. And now I'm gonna have texture on top of the texture. So now I've got more like, the kitty litter in this situation becomes almost like little, well not little, but bigger rocks. Like to scale with somebody like me, they'd be rocks that were maybe like, you know, tennis ball sized or maybe even a little bit smaller depending. When you go through your, you know, thing of kitty litter and don't use used kitty litter, go and find someone who's got a cat, say, can I have some kitty litter that has not been sullied and then have a little bottle of it. It will last you for like a really long time. Um, in this situation, you can separate out the bigger chunks from the littler chunks. Sometimes, depending on the manufacturer, there are flavor crystals, not flavor crystals, but there's like weird, you know, um, crystals in there that allow you to uh, 
they give off like a, fr- a fragrance or whatever and things like that. I would maybe try to stay away from that. F- get the cheap stuff because it frequently comes in. It's got a lot of high clay content, so the glue will soak into it to hold it a lot better. And it'll just pretty much work really well that way. If you want to here, like I've still got some of that glue that's still wet, I can actually just sprinkle a little bit more and, uh, and then go from there, just knock it off. And like I said, that's pretty much it. Now, if you were doing this as a model, you could then glue the guy onto it. And then I would say prime on top of all of this. I would not generally do this at the end. Once you've painted your model, I would do this before you even start priming. Some people don't like the texture before they paint. I am not one of those people. I believe it makes a lot of sense because as you prime, you're actually sealing down the texture of the base a little bit more. So definitely look into uh, just making sure that you've got your texture, your person's glued down. If you want to do your bases completely separate from a person, that's fine too. But I would definitely, I would never let the um, baking soda just be raw, unpainted, unprimed, because it will yellow over time. There are some people who try to use it as like a snow effect and they'll say, you know, sprinkle a bunch of baking soda and that'll look good for about a couple of weeks, maybe, maybe a bit longer, but after that, not so good. So, um, yeah, if you want to do more, you can take pieces of cork and things like that and you can slide little pieces of cork on there. You can put the stuff on top of the cork. I like to do a lot of different things, but really what I've done here, here's an example of an unpainted base. So this is my, um, Redemptor Dreadnought for my Space Marines. And you can see here what I've done. I've taken a lot of different parts. You've got some basing material from one of the press fit um, Primaris Marines. You can see there's a resin skull down here. You can see there's a LAS cannon that I just kind of cut off to look like it got buried. And you can see the mixture of not just um, litter and also the, um, the baking soda, but you can also see there's some black sand on there too. There's a bunch of different things going on all over this piece. And I'm just about to get ready to start priming it, but I did all this before I primed it so that when I prime it, I'm covering that all up and it'll work real nice and also help to kind of, again, keep it down. I obviously went through and I took my brush and I brushed off as much as I could because you don't want loose baking soda to get primed because then it'll flake away and then the primer will flake away and it's just a mess. So this is a technique I've been using in my models for years and years. Here's a bunch of different examples of different things that I've done um, with this same technique. I really like the way that they work out. I really like being able to kind of tell a story. You can do things if you need to, like put some um, uh, liquid green stuff underneath there to give you s- yourself like more of a, of a hill or a raise. You can throw down pieces of slate. You can put down little tiny rocks, um, twigs, uh, you know, branches, little tiny roots, anything that you find outside. If it's roots and, and plant material, you're gonna probably wanna dry it something like in the oven or something like that. Don't dry it in the microwave, that won't work. Go from that direction and then see what you can get. But you're gonna need to have that stuff really like dry because otherwise if it's all glued down, covered and painted and then it's slowly letting off moisture as it's doing that, it will really ruin the paint. So you wanna make sure that the pieces that you're gonna use, if you're gonna use wood and things like that, make sure it's very dry. Um, but this stuff is, it's just really a lot of fun to work with. I think it's very quick. Um, you know, you, you, you have to be concerned about, as you're slopping a lot of CA glue on there, about it spilling. Um, I've had that happen before and getting all over stuff. So there's that kind of issue. But it, uh, it, otherwise it generally works pretty well. Some people will say, yeah, but CA glue is pretty expensive. You're spending a lot on CA glue there. And that's true to some degree, but you know, PVA glue, though cheaper, doesn't stick to plastic bases very well. And I have seen people who have done all their basing and put their model on there and the entire base just comes off. Like, you know, when you try to peel like white glue off your fingers when you were a kid in school, it's like that only off of plastic, which means it's even easier to peel. So I would definitely try to use the CA glue. It's a little bit more expensive, but I think you're gonna be happier um, down the road. So again, there's just not that much to it. It is simply putting CA glue on the base, using a little cocktail stick, a little toothpick, whatever you want to call it, to scooch it around and get it to cover all the places you want. Maybe sprinkle some kitty litter or some sand, and then just that pinching motion, just grab yourself, get yourself a little sandwich container Tupperware thing full of um, baking soda, leave it in your hobby area, and then just do it right over it so that any that it does, it just, it goes in back in. It doesn't get all over and make a giant mess because it will make a mess. If you knock this over, it will make a giant mess. I can tell you that for sure. 
But uh, do that and then let it dry for five, 10 minutes at, at best, and then just brush it off with an old brush, blow on it, and then um, start adding more stuff. Add a skull, add some cool little sticks, add some stones, whatever you wanna add uh, to make your bases really tell a little story because that's the most important stuff. You want your bases to not just be a thing that your little person stands on, but to really place them in the atmosphere and to make the overall piece really a lot more interesting. But that's basically it. You just spread it around and it takes a while to dry. Try to not get it on the edges. If you get it on the edges, wipe it off with your finger. Oh, and then you get it on the other edge and it's already going to hell. So uh, let's see here. I'm gonna try to figure out, I didn't bring up napkin. So I'm just gonna wipe it over here. When you get CA glue on your fingers, the best thing to do is to try to wipe it onto something plastic. So you can try to stick your fingers to the thing that is plastic. All right. so. Now I've glued it to the, all right. <laughs> this is spectacular. Okay, we're doing great. 